Good evening, everybody. Nice to meet you all. How are you? I'm great. I have a little bit of food between my teeth, but I'm just fine. It took place the summer before fourth grade, the summer of my first kiss, in one of those large green army tents that the Hosey, the fire hall, put up for their annual picnic. Now, I'm not even sure how we made it past that Polish man that sold tickets sitting at the front of the tent. Maybe it was because we were helping to put up tables and chairs all day long, carrying and helping this public boy and I. You see, I had not met a public boy. I was a good Catholic girl. And when I met this boy who looked different than all the other boys around me, when he smiled at me and had this twinkle in his eye, I thought, I wonder where he came from. And then he told me, the public school up on the corner of Maple Street, three blocks away. Now, I had gone to St. Catherine's parochial school since I was in first grade. So the allure and excitement of being around a public boy was pretty, pretty cool. We got along just great. We talked about what we did, how many brothers and sisters we had, where we went to school, what we did for fun, and we helped carry chairs and tables. And then, after we were all done, he kind of took my hand, which made my heart go a little bumpy, and he pulled me to the back of that tent, to the dark part of that tent, and he sat down. And so I sat down next to him, and I waited. And all of a sudden, he leaned over and he... <laughs> he gave me the squeakiest kiss. <laughs> it was loud enough for the man at the front of the tent to go, Hey, you, both of you, get on out of here before I found out who your parents are and I let them know what you're doing in the back of this tent. <laughs> what were you doing? All of a sudden, all those years of going to confession started to work on my heart and my mind. Now, the great part about the kiss was that Wooly Bully was playing in the background. Wooly Bully, shake your coolie. Wooly Bully, Wooly Bully. But that was it, nothing else, just a kiss. And off we went, we stuffed our faces with pierogies and kielbasa and potato pancakes and birch beer. For the rest of the summer, every once in a while, I'd walk behind the house and I'd walk around where the tenants stood and I'd remember that first kiss. But it was too special to tell my girlfriends who had just begun talking about sex. They had just begun whispering secrets on the back porch, making sure we swang really fast and stomped our feet heavily so our parents couldn't hear us through the screen door as they washed and dried dishes. It was too special to tell anyone. And then, after a while, it, it was forgotten why we had too many summer things to do, sliding down cold banks, racing, picking up lightning bugs, taking off their guts and lights, wearing them for engagement rings on our fingers, <laughs> campfires, ghost stories, and bats that zoomed down at the night, right over your hair, so you knew it was time to go in. And then the first day, still summer, even though I didn't quite understand how we could be going to school in the summer, I went off to fourth grade. I had a big, heavy book bag, an umbrella, because it had rained that morning. And as the doors burst open and I found myself running down the front steps, I saw a great group of boys across the street in front of Mrs. Procopio's store. Now normally, I would have given them one look and off I would have gone. But that day, I happened to see him across the street, the public boy, and my heart started to go So I waved, but he didn't wave back. Instead, he started to point, and so did all those other boys, pointing, pointing, and laughing. And I started to feel really strange. 
like maybe they knew something about me that I didn't know about myself. I checked to see if my uniform skirt was straightened. I, I checked to see if my hair was off the back of my neck. And I waved again, but he didn't wave back. And so I started to make my way across the side street. And I noticed that one boy, older than the rest of them, broke away. And I kind of remembered his face. It was that public school boy's older brother. And he crossed the street as I crossed the street. He crossed the main street just as I arrived at Ella's hat stand. There was her store behind me. He began to come closer and closer and closer to me, and I began to back up. He came so close to me, he looked right at my lips, and I thought, oh, surely he's not. He is not going to try and kiss me with all those boys across the street. I glanced over to his brother, and instead of, of smiling or waving, he just pointed and laughed. My heart began to pound as I stretched back towards the window, perching over my right and left shoulders were these mannequin heads with all kinds of hats, fedoras for the men, these beautiful kind of velveteen ones for the women with great plumes and feathers, staring down at me as if to say, shouldn't have done that. <laughs> The summer sun was still beating. My heart was beating just as fast. And just as he came closer than I have ever been to any boy before, suddenly I began to smile. I smiled right at him. I looked him right in the eye. I even puckered up my lips. And when he came this close, I took that umbrella in my hand and I whacked him right on top of the head. He stumbled back and I started to run. I felt a little bit like a track star with that book bag moving back and forth, my Catholic school uniform flying in the air. I ran five porch streets, or five porches down, a whole flight of steps up. I ran into the house and I slammed the door and I went over and pulled down the Venetian blinds. My mother called out to me, Debbie, how was your first day? Uh-huh, I said as I peered out. For there across the street was that public school boy and his older brother. His older brother was still rubbing his head and he was yelling at his brother and the young one was yelling back and they were pointing across the street. And I locked that door. But before I had done anything at all about entering into my own home, I made sure that my umbrella was standing right near the steps, just in case anyone had a wild hair about crossing that street. Now, I want you to know that I've kissed many a boy since I was eight years old. Many a boy, some of them I've known a long time, and some of them I didn't know at all. But each and every time I kissed someone new, I was reminded about the passion that was released with that long ago summer kiss. Thank you.